Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here, and welcome back. Right, Thursday morning here in Australia. Market has jumped uh, quite nicely. Now we're at 2.38 trillion. So this is the highest we've been in a while. We got up to 2.37, dropped back down to I think 2.36, 2.34, something like that. And now we're back up at 2.38 trillion. So very, very nice. Uh, we do have a weekend sort of not too far away. So can we hold or is this a little bit of a pump before we have a retracement on the, the weekend, which is something we uh, see Oh, you know, I want to say commonly, but it changes all the time. You know, it'll be, you know, the retracements happen on the weekends and then all of a sudden it'll be, no, we'll be pumping during the weekends. So it's hard to keep up with it, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But Bitcoin dominance at 45%. So it was at 46, dropped down to 44, I think, 43, and now back up to 45%. So very nice. And I mean, as you can see, Bitcoin, it looks like it's now going to retest 58 sort of thousand. At least that's what it's looking like here. We'll have to go to the charts and have a look. But that's looking nice and again, quite bullish. All right, volume down ever so slightly. As I said, Bitcoin price just under sort of, well, just over 57 and a half thousand, heading towards that $58,000 mark. And uh, ETH gas price is around about sort of, well, just under $7 for a basic transaction, which is still pretty expensive. Uh, but yeah, we're all just waiting on ETH 2.0 to finally roll out and sharding and everything. It literally can't come quick enough. But I guess, you know, they want to do their due, 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 due diligence and make sure that it's done properly and not rush anything because there'd be nothing worse for Ethereum, to, Ethereum than to rush it and then all of a sudden it doesn't work. All right, let's have a look at the markets and what's done the best in the last 24 hours because generally things are in the green, hence why the market's up 2.6%, but we can see some red in there. And of course, Solana, when I buy it, you can guarantee it's going to go down. I, you know, I had to get a position in it. I thought I was getting a good spot uh, and down it goes. I think I bought it... 168 $171, something like that. So not its all-time highs, but anyway, really probably about 130 would have been a better place to get in, but I didn't do that, so we'll have to wait and see. If it continues to go down, then I'll uh, look to buy some more. But anyway, oof, DOT, and I got some news about DOT, and I think that's most likely why it is uh, pumping at the moment. So what's done the best in the top 100 in the last 24 hours? There we go, it was DOT, boom, 17%. Uh, very nice move from DOT. Telcoin, 16%, good. Uh, Olympus, uh, doing quite nicely, 15%. So we got three really nice movers in a 24 hour period. Perp, not too far off, people getting bullish on Kasama a bit, and that's to do with Polkadot as well, no doubt. Safe Moon, good lord, it's up 11%, but it's always generally at that two. I've seen it at two, three, and four. That's it. Other other than that, I've never really seen it move, but, you know, people still believe in Safe Moon, I guess, so there you go. Stacks making a comeback, and again, what you're seeing at the moment is a lot of coins that haven't moved, uh, sorry, that were going down in the last few days are now starting to bounce back a little bit, because that's the way it is. You've got to remember, Coins don't just go up forever and they don't just go down forever unless something really bad has happened. Uh, then they can literally go to zero, but even that's uh, you know unheard of unless it's just a really crap project. But they will go up and down and move you know in flows. So you know it's that kind of saying you know in a bull market they'll go up, they'll go up you know three steps, they'll come back down maybe two steps or one step. And then they'll go back up three again, and then they come down maybe one or two. So it's up and down, up and down, but with a general uptrending sort of market. And that's where we've been for a while now. You know, and the the interesting question and what everyone's really what everyone would love to know is how much longer are we going to go up before we start to go down? And it is a question that everyone wants to know, uh, so they can, you know, sell at the most opportunistic time and then buy back in at the most opportunistic time. And look. Again, I've said this a number of times, no one really knows when that is going to happen. It's all just a guessing game. Uh, and I've said this before, I love what one of the Rothschilds said. One of the original, I think it was the original Rothschild, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But he said, he never sold a top. He always sold too early and he never bought the bottom. But what he did do is make a whole lot of money in between. And it, you know, they went on to be one of the richest families in the world. So just keep that in mind. 
you do need to understand charts a little bit. Like you, you don't don't need to be an expert, but you need to be able to go back through the history of Bitcoin and any cryptos you're in and things like that, and be able to understand where we might be in the cycle. And as long as you're selling, it again doesn't even have to be that close to the top. You know, even if you only get three quarters of the way to the top, you're going to make some money if you bought at a much lower price. And then again, you don't need to buy at the absolute bottom. Very few people buy the absolute bottom. That's the truth. Hardly anyone. You, you know, you could probably count them. Uh, well, I won't say count them on your hand, but maybe you could. Even worldwide, it's just it really is uh, very lucky to buy the absolute bottom, and it's very lucky if you sell the absolute top. Uh, again, it's almost unheard of, but you can make a whole lot of money in between if you just do a little bit of research. So anyway, look, some great movers there. I mean, double digit movers all over the place, looking absolutely fantastic. Even V Chain making a nice eight percent move, very nice. What about the flip side of the coin though? What hasn't performed so well in the last 24 hours? In the top 100. All right, so MDEX down a little bit, Akomi down, Harmony 1. Uh, again, they were pumping not that long ago. So these are coins that have generally been pumping. You know, Luna, FTM and things like that. They're having a retracement. Filecoin, Shiba Inu. <laughs> again, I mean, it had this big crazy pump of like 100 something percent in a matter of seven days. And it's obviously uh, retracing a little bit. For me, you know, I don't really invest in meme coins it's not to say uh, again i don't invest in meme coins plain and simple i will trade meme coins uh, and i've told this before i got into doge twice last year and i doubled my money both times now unfortunately if i had have just held for a lot longer i would have <laughs> been able to make made more money but you know those those are the breaks i've still made uh you know good returns anyway but uh, no, no Shiba Inu returns and no Doge returns. Unfortunately, I didn't make anything like that. So that was quite sad. All right, so let's move on. We've seen what's done well and what hasn't. Here's the Bitcoin chart and have a look. We are up ever so close to that $58,000 mark. But we have kind of been rejected from here. So one, two, uh, and sort of three times at the moment. We just can't break it. So we're waiting to see if we can. And if we can't, if we can't, excuse me, I think there's a good chance we come back to around about here. 55, 54,000, again, maybe even down to around kind of, you know, the $53,000 mark, but definitely possible. We come back down uh, and retest, you know, the 50, basically the, the high 52,000, low $53,000 mark. No guarantees in life, but things are looking all right at the moment. Again, we've had this big move up, so it wouldn't be unheard of. So again, as I said, three steps up. One, two, three, and we come down two steps. Maybe one, two, and again, maybe even sort of somewhere down to around about here, back to the $50,000 level. That really would scare people. I think it's more likely we're probably going to come back down to around about, again, the $53,000, $52,500 level thereabouts before we make our next uh, move back up. And look, if we do that over the next few days, have a look at that it lines up perfectly with this uptrending channel that we've been in for a really long time. So again, if that was to happen by sort of the 19th or sort of the 18th of October, so that's only four days away, i.e., you know, basically sort of Sunday here Australian time or Saturday here Australian time or Saturday uh, States time, sorry, I should say, that would kind of marry up perfectly down a little bit over the weekend, come back down, retest this and bounce back up. Again, we'll have to wait and see where that happens. Look, only a couple of stories I want to bring you today. There wasn't a whole lot, but this is very interesting and I think has a lot to do with why Polkadot is pumping so hard and Kasama. Polkadot say they are ready for their parachain launch. Now, this has been coming for a long time and I, you know, over five years, Polkadot has basically been sort of in development for now. And finally, parachains are coming to Polkadot. They came to Kasama, and I mean, you look at things like Moon River, you know, the kind of returns that were made, they were absolutely crazy. Well, Polkadot has now come out and said that they're going to open up the uh, parachain slots around about the Nove November 11th. And they said, you know, it could change a couple of days later, things like that. May I doubt it's going to be a couple of days earlier. It might even be a week or so later, but around about November the 11th. So if you want to take part in that, what you need to do is you need to make sure that you have some polka dot 
unlocked. If you're staking Polkadot, and I think it takes around about 21 days or something like that, 28 days to unlock it, you probably want to get onto that fairly soon. You're not going to have a lot of time to do it right now so that you can then take it over and you know bet on which parachain you think is going to go live. Now, what's interesting is it says down here, the first batch of five auctions would take place with one new auction each week with a second batch of six auctions to take place with one new auction every two weeks. The first batch of five parachains would be onboarded to Polkadot at least at lease period six, sorry, which begins on approximately December 17th. So we're still a ways from that rather than being onboarded immediately following each auction as has occurred on Kasama. The second batch of six auctions would be onboarded for lease period seven, which begins on approximately March 11th, 2022. So we still got months away before that second uh, lot of auctions come. So very big news for Polkadot. And again, I think that really has a lot to do with why the price was going so hard. So sorry, we'll go back here. And I mean, look at that and, and you know, rising. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot more people start to get into Polkadot and, and this price could really rise right up until November sort of 11th. So that's another month thereabouts that Polkadot could be on the rise. But it could also be, you know, kind of buy the rumour, sell the news. Not that it's rumour, that kind of is news. But I think there will be a number of people who will want to get onto Polkadot so they can get into the parachains and be hoping to do something like Moon River, which a hundred, you know, thousand X something. I don't think it's thousand X, but it did something absolutely ridiculous. Big returns were made. Uh, that is something I will absolutely be looking to do. Uh, I won't be putting too much into it though, but I'll definitely be having a look at what auctions are, you know, are having a crack at trying to get a slot uh, and then picking the one or the few that I think will be uh, likely to get those uh, parachains. All right, so Bitcoin, China, banned, got rid of it, you know, not all of it, but got rid of a lot of mining. And also the FUD that's going on, you know, particularly over in the States about, you know, oh, the government's going to come in and they're really going to regulate, uh, you know, crypto and particularly, you know, Bitcoin and things like that and just make it really hard. Well, will they? So data coming out of Cambridge says the US has become the leader for Bitcoin hash for Bitcoin hash rate. The leader. Is it possible that they tried to FUD this because they knew China was doing the same? hoping that China would go, yep, yeah, let's get rid of it, knowing that they would be able to entice some of them over to the United States. I think that's definitely possible. You know, a bit of a kind of conspiracy theory there, but they can see what's happening with cryptocurrency and particularly Bitcoin around the world. Do you think now that they have become one of the lead or become the leader for Bitcoin hash rate, that they're going to want to over-regulate that, come down heavy on it and just crush it? I don't think so. Now, could they do that to other cryptocurrencies? Absolutely, they could. But again, I just don't see it. I think there's a lot of sort of stage play in theatre, again, to try and keep things down as low as they can so all the big players and governments and everything can get their positions ready to then finally come out and say, you know, here's our decision. And they, don't get me wrong, the regulations aren't going to be fan, fantastic, you know, like that everyone thinks they're going to be. But hopefully they're just not drastic. They are good regulations that do try to protect people. But again, don't come down too heavy. That, that's what has me most worried that, you know, they do something, you know, similar to what they did with gold and they stopped everyone from owning gold. And then, you know, it all went back to the banks. I can't see them doing that with crypto. It'd be pretty hard to come and take crypto off people but they definitely could make it really hard and again just look after the big end of town the big end of town is doing just fine they don't need to be looked after any further it's the middle class and the lower class that really need to be looked after but you know you make everyone basically rich all of a sudden there's you know those the elites no longer become elites and that's what they want it's a it's a privilege to be like that, you know, to some people, depending on how you want to look at it. And they don't want everyone to be like that because then they become just normal and they don't want that. Uh, and the rest of us want to become, you know, not normal and like the rich it is. Yeah, quite an interesting scenario of how people 
you know, few few wealth, particularly when they get there, and that they don't want too many other people to come and join that class because then it just becomes the norm. And you know, who wants to be the norm, as they would say? All right, moving over to here. Over eighty five percent of circulating Bitcoin has not moved in three months or more. October, September, August. Basically, from the bottom, a whole lot of people have bought Bitcoin. And they have just held, even though we've had downward movements, a lot of Bitcoin has hardly moved. People are starting to catch on that they're not getting caught up with all this FUD and, you know, the governments are going to do this, China's banning it and all this stuff is going to happen. They have done some research and they're holding. I like the sounds of that. Now, I don't want to, again, I'm never offering you financial advice. I don't want to say that you should never sell your Bitcoin. It really depends on what you're selling it for. If you think it's a good time and you can buy it back in cheaper, then, you know, sure, but be careful because, again, that's not that easy. You have to remember you're probably not going to sell the exact top, so it could still double after you sell, but then maybe come down a whole lot from where you sell and you can buy in a whole lot cheaper. So, again, just be careful. But if you're going to sell an investment, and that's what I like to talk about because I'm not a trader, an investment, you're going to take some profits and all the rest of it, that's great. But you've got to ask yourself, what are you doing it for? Are you simply selling it because you think you have to? Well, what are you going to do with those profits? If you have a plan, like I'm going to take some profits and invest in this because it's down really low or because I just want to diversify and things like that, then great. But if you're just going, oh, well, you know, you have to take profits, that's not true. You don't have to take profits if you're in something that over you know, the space of the last 10 years has been the best performing asset ever. Well, why are you taking profits is something I would say to you. And again, I'm not trying to tell you not to take profits. Taking profits is a good idea, but you've got to be taking it for a reason. Don't just go, well, because people say you have to. Well, you don't have to if you're investing, particularly if you're looking more five to 10 years. Well, in five to 10 years time, you can look at taking some profits. But also remember you need to manage you know, your risk properly and you need to manage any asset. Even Bitcoin, things may change in the next five years and all of a sudden Bitcoin is not where you want to have your money. Again, I never offer you financial advice. I just need to reiterate that. I'm definitely not a financial advisor. But if things change, then your investing strategy may, may need to change. So again, I'm investing in Bitcoin long term. Minimum sort of five to ten years possibly sort of the rest of my life we'll have to wait and see but if things change then obviously I'm going to have to change my tactic and will I be taking profits absolutely but that's only because I want to diversify into you know some property uh, into businesses and things like that but it's got to be done at the right time it's not just simply because you know people have told me you have to take profits no, there's got to be the property I want available at a good price. There's got to be a business that I would like to buy uh, at the right price. If none of that's happening, then for me, I'm pretty happy to just leave my, you know, my money, as they say, in Bitcoin. Because Bitcoin, on average, goes up 200% every year. Will it continue to do that forever? No, absolutely not. But could it continue to do that for another maybe five to ten years? Uh, definitely possible. Now, again, the other thing you need to remember is they say on average it goes up 200% every year. That's the average. You've got to remember when there's a bear market, it has gone down a whole lot. And, you know, 80 to, you know, 90% previously. Will we go down another 80 to 90% again? I'm not so sure. But just remember that, that it's not literally going to be every year you see 200% gains. It's on average, that's what it's done. And, you know, history doesn't guarantee future returns, but on average, you should see it on the going to the upside. All right, that's it from me. Not going to take up too much more of your time. i got to get to work uh, in <laughs> not too long at all. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. You should all be on that game train at the moment. Things are looking pretty good. Is Bitcoin about to break out? I'm sure we've all got our fingers crossed and I'll see you next time.